this is a little sensation because After Effects can now import and handle 3D objects natively without plugins. It's a bit limited though. For example, the 3D objects cannot cast and receive shadows, which is less than what was possible in the 1990s. But I'm still curious if in certain conditions it might be possible to create something with quality and something useful. And for this reason, I want to film a shot at one of my favorite places at the wooden jetty. I shot this clip at the lake early in the morning knowing that the sun rather casts a diffused shadows and I thought that 3D objects on water don't necessarily need shadows and reflections are easier to fake anyway. So this footage was perfect for me to test the new 3D import feature in a simulated real-life project scenario from the VFX compositor's point of view. I did the basics first and roto brushed myself, which was a no-brainer, but took forever on 4K footage. This was also true for the camera tracker, but because it was just a pan shot, it caused no tracking and no camera solving problems. In Cinema 4D, I created a simple sphere as I didn't want to waste time fiddling with complex 3D models as I wanted to focus on After Effects' new 3D abilities. For the same reason, I didn't use a texture, but extruded some polygons instead to create some interesting details. If you don't have a C4D subscription, you could also create objects in Blender, which is a popular and free 3D program. But if it overwhelms you, you can also use Adobe Dimension, which is part of the Creative Cloud and very easy to use. From here, you also have access to 3D models, of which some of them are for free. If you still feel uncomfortable with Adobe Dimension, you can even create 3D objects in Adobe Illustrator. No matter which 3D app you prefer, I recommend to export your model as an OBJ file. Same in Dimension and Blender, or in my case Cinema 4D, where I first split the sphere into three parts, cap, extrusion, base, before I exported them. In After Effects, I imported the three OBJ files with the intention to edit them separately for more visual control. I dragged them into the composition window and made them comp size to have them uncropped in the camera view. Not without being hinted that the renderer was changed to Mercury 3D Render Engine. I'm gonna talk about it later. After checking if it matched the camera movement, I found out that no matter the layer order of the 3D objects, the correct way they intersect with each other in 3D space was maintained, as long as they are part of the same 3D bin indicated by this white frame, and which you can break when you place a 2D layer in between. Then I parented two of the sphere parts to the remaining one so I could easily transform them in sync. I selected one of the tracking points and converted it into a track null layer that contained the position coordinates of where I wanted to place the sphere. At the same time, it gave me the elevation of the water surface. Then I copy pasted the track null's position into the sphere. By the way, what's positive is that scrubbing through the timeline runs buttery smooth. Even in 4K and full resolution, you can work with it without viewport lagging. Up until now, the Mercury 3D renderer has been reserved for the draft 3D mode because of its low quality. But obviously, the After Effects development team made this GPU-based real-time engine an optional renderer, additional to the classic 3D and Cinema 4D render engine, to make native 3D objects happen in After Effects. And although Adobe states that Mercury 3D is not for final output because there hasn't been anti-aliasing yet, they now included this slider, like in the other render engines, to increase the final render quality. And this enhancement made a really good impression to me. But I still have to try out how this performs with more complex and texturized high-poly models compared to this simple sphere I'm using here. I moved the sphere by eye to place it above the water surface, but I wanted it precise. Because there was no clue about the sphere's measurements in the properties panel, I created a new null layer, parented it to the 3D object layer, set the position to 0, 0, 0 to place it in the 3D model center, and reposition it to the sphere's bottom with the help of the front view to make it exact. 
Then I fixed the orientation, this time by eye, as I didn't need to be precise, scaled it down and put it slightly above the water surface. Then I created another track null layer to approximately get the sun's position data, created a point light, copy pasted the null's position value into it and repositioned it to the sun's center. To brighten up the sphere, I created an ambient light with a bluish color, simulating the sky's diffused light. As I mentioned, one disadvantage is that there is no self-shadowing right now. That's why I created another point light. And a cool trick to darken a 3D object is to dial down the intensity to a negative value. And after tweaking the fake shadow and the sunlight, I was happy with the basic lighting of the sphere. Then I duplicated the sphere rig and placed it somewhere here in the sky to find out that the point light for the sun was not far enough to light it from behind. So I increased its distance to the second sphere. But matching it with the sun on the background plate made the rim light on the big sphere disappear. And although it was not physically correct, I repositioned the light somewhere to the left because this looked right for me from my artistic point of view. Then I duplicated the sphere again and placed it here. And the cool thing is, I could animate the properties comfortably via the properties panel to add some rotation movements to the spheres. Next I repositioned the sphere to make it overlap with myself. This added some depth in the composition of the shot. For the same reason, I repositioned the sphere behind. Because the Mercury 3D render engine doesn't offer reflections yet, I duplicated the nearest sphere and set the Y scale value to negative to mirror it horizontally. Happy with the 3D setup, I wanted to start with the compositing. But like in the Cinema 4D render engine, effects for 3D object layers are disabled. For this reason, I duplicated the camera and the soundtrack knob for later use and pre-composed the rest of the 3D related layers. I duplicated the background plate, applied a Mocha AE effect to it and tracked the wooden jetty and part of the grove to cover the reflection on the water and the sphere on the right. To make the sphere visible through the branches, I created a luminance track mat. And because I found the right sphere too bright, I masked it and lowered its highlights. A common technique in VFX compositing is light wrapping to better blend the additional elements into the background plate to achieve a seamless look. On this occasion, I tested the free light wrap plugin from Production Create, which worked quite well. I improved the reflection by multiplying it with the water, fast blurring and turbulent displacing it. I could have used the Real Lens Flares plugin that makes photoreal lens flares, but it was so laggy that I preferred the good old lens flare effect, of which I knew that it was totally outdated but was perfect for my purpose. I tinted it yellow and parented it to the 3D track null layer to match the sun's position, but because the lens flare is a 2D effect, I had to apply the 2Comp expression to project the 3D coordinates into the composition's 2D space. And the tracked lens flare made the composition even more cohesive and unified. And to make it a bit more believable, I duplicated the background plate and added a softened mask to make the sphere immerse into the atmosphere, which in real life is typical for distanced objects. But I realized that the 3D layer was a better track mat to stick the atmosphere to the 3D model. Then I wanted to edit the extrusion part of the 3D sphere separately. The reason why I split the model in Cinema 4D before. So I created a white solid and set the 3D extrusion layer as a track mat. But I didn't want the rear extrusions included, just the visible ones on the surface. And even combined with the other 3D parts, I didn't get what I needed. It would have been easy if I had applied fill effects to the 3D objects, but as I mentioned before, it was not possible. So I had no other choice than to switch to Cinema 4D and colorize the sphere accordingly. But this time it was sufficient to import the sphere as one single 3D object into After Effects. In the duplicated 3D pre-comp, I deleted the objects that were not animated. And the cool thing is, I could replace the remaining objects with a new one via drag and drop while adopting the existing animation. On the new pre-composition, I applied a tint effect and a glow effect. Then I added a fractal noise to get interesting variations in the luminance. 
but you could notice that the fractal noise was not moving with the camera. So I turned it off, copied the fractal noise effect, created a new black solid, pasted the fractal noise to it, precomposed it with a duplicated camera, created another black solid, applied a CC environment effect to it, selected the fractal noise layer as the environment map and scaled it down. And then the texture matched with the camera movement and the glow as well. During the render process, I noticed some interesting glitches, which told me that the render engine is not production ready yet. But after re-rendering the according frames, I was happy with the result. So, you've seen the pros using 3D objects during my compositing workflow and how I bypassed the cons when I encountered them. Sure, there are third-party solutions that are far better than what this new 3D feature is capable of right now. And even the already existing built-in 3D functions like extruding shape layers or importing C4D files feel more powerful, at least on paper. But my take on it has always been, if it slows down my intuitive workflow, then I'll pass on it. Then it's a deal breaker for me. A lagging viewport, pop-up windows with totally different user interfaces, then I'd rather leave After Effects and do the job in Cinema 4D. I'm cautiously optimistic that the After Effects development team is going towards a better direction, but it's early to say where this leads. My wishlist isn't so demanding, and I'm totally with Adobe when they say that it's not to replace a dedicated 3D software. Sure, adding shadows and reflections is mandatory. Maybe creating 3D primitives would be fine. But my only wish for now is that they allow the 3D object layers to have effects, which would preserve the intuitive look and feel of the After Effects user interface when dealing with 3D objects. And my biggest wish for the future is that you can edit, modify, deform, clone, add materials to the 3D objects with dedicated 3D effects in the effect controls panel. I'll leave it like that for now because this would be a topic for another video, but I hope that the After Effects developers are watching this video right now and think about it. See you next time.